Coach Burt, thank you very much for joining me. Um, you are the only head coach in this program that I haven't, I guess, experienced. <laughs> I've been through all the rest of them that we've had. Because um, I, when I started as a student, that was uh, the fall of 2000. So okay. you had you had already moved on down to Florida State. But so you know, just just kind of looking back at, at your time, you know, you went from programs, even starting as a student athlete, programs that had already been established. You know, Western Michigan had started in it was, I think 1976, Nickel State 1981, Florida State 1978, Ohio State 1972. What made you want to come to Huntington, West Virginia and start a program from scratch? It was on my bucket list. It was something that I wanted to do from scratch. The SEC okay. was getting ready to play. Uh, I had applied for a couple jobs um, there and uh, wasn't really sure of the school of one opportunity. But I thought, you know, I really wanted to start my own program. Um, Sometimes when you follow in the footsteps of someone else as an uh, assistant coach going to a head, it, it's kind mm -hmm. of tough. So I thought this will be challenging. Why not? So um, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity. Uh, Huntington was not that far from Columbus. Mm -hmm. So um, when I made the two hour drive down to check it out and then um, Lee Moon at the time was the athletic director along with Keener they came up to Ohio State and chatted with me a couple times. So then I went back down and I thought, yeah, this is possible. It, it, it was a good area as far as a recruiting base because you, were, you could draw the Midwest kids, you could draw the Southern kids, um, different kids from different areas. The only downfall at that point in time, as I learned over the years, was I wasn't close enough to an airport. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Um, after living in Tallahassee and then flying out of Tallahassee, sitting in Atlanta, that was something that next time I get a job, I'm going where there's a local close airport. <laughs> yeah, we, we've definitely struggled with that. Obviously, you have times where you're either flying out of Lexington, flying out of Columbus, you know, maybe driving to Charleston, occasionally driving right. to Cincinnati for trips, you know. So, yeah, definitely, definitely understand that one a little bit. Um, but okay, let, let's go back a little bit now. So talk about playing at Western Michigan. You were two-time All-American. You, yeah, you helped them go to several postseasons. I, I believe at least the postseason every every year that you were there. And your career batting average is still listed in the all-time top 10 there. Uh, did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, you're because I think of the lead school. pipe that I used to swing, and and nowadays with the <laughs> equipment that they have, that's interesting. Yeah, so, but so what was it like playing for the Broncos back then? Well, we had a lot of studs. We had a lot of um, good athletes that could play several positions. Um, and actually, my junior year in high school, I had followed them quite a bit, just because they were the best program in the state. And I got to know several of them playing uh, travel ball against them. I was on a women's major team when I was 13, so I didn't play this 14, 16, 18 under that they have now. So I always played against college players. So in getting to know them, I thought, why not go to the strongest team in the state um, and compete? And we did. So I was fortunate enough we had All-Americans and – every class that when I was there. So that was fortunate. Okay. Um, and then obviously speaking of playing multiple positions, you were on the basketball team as well. So you were quite busy in athletics back then. I did. And during that time, I also played ice hockey. <laughs> ice hockey too. Wow. I, I grew mean, up on skates, so I'm not going to lie. We were playing it. basketball and, uh, yeah. and I was playing, uh, if you will, AAU um, ice hockey. So we went all over to Canada and whatever. So I, I never sat still. Okay. Well, that's, well, that's not bad. I mean, they keep talking about now how, you know, you have too many kids who like to try and specialize in one thing, but right. some of the better athletes end up being ones who played multiple sports. Exactly. I truly believe that going through that, and I was fortunate enough to play both basketball and softball, mm -hmm. but um, I truly believe you get the athlete when they're well-rounded versus sports specific. And I see more coaches today recruiting the athlete. Okay. 
Um, I do want to ask real quick. Uh, let, let's see what it looks like real quick with the uh, with the light off that you're. Okay, talking. hang it. Just just to, just to see. I just want to make sure you don't disappear. Oh. How's that? No, actually, actually, I think that'll be all right. That'll okay. Be all, okay, that that'll be good. All uh, right. Okay, so now after your time at Western Michigan, now you begin your coaching journey, and it starts off at Nichols State. Now, just was coaching something you always wanted to get into, or was that something that kind of developed while you were in college? You know, I think um, when I was in college, I was fortunate enough to work with the youth league, the recreation league in the city of Kalamazoo. I was the assistant director at the same time I was going to school. So I uh, worked with little league baseball, t-ball, and then I was an umpire and I worked with my boss to organize the umpires for the slow pitch league. And I really enjoyed the game, but I was going to be a basketball coach first. Okay. And then I thought, why do I want to be a basketball coach when you got to stay inside? You know, um, I'm an outdoors person. So uh, I decided to go the softball route and said, and um, when I was getting out of college, I had an opportunity to go be an assistant basketball coach. And then I went on the interview and I'm just like, yeah, this is not me. And uh, a friend of mine knew the head coach at Nickel State. They went to college together, and the rest is history. Okay, well, uh, talk a little bit then about getting that first experience there at Nichols State because, you know, your first year there, they set a program record for at the time with 47 wins. Well, it was interesting because my boss at the time, uh, Lynn Oberbilling, was the assistant basketball coach. So we didn't do the things that we did today. Um, but a lot of times I was by myself with the players uh, and learning, making mistakes. She'd come out and uh, we did a lot of practices together. But at the same time, um, there would be days that I would be by myself. So I learned a lot. I got to fail. I got to be successful. I think the, that was a good point for the players to trust me because I was four years older than they were. Mm. Uh, some of them only two. And um, it, it was a good opportunity, but um, she was really good as far as um, a teacher, a mentor. She explained, hey, this, this is what we do. This is why we do it. The culture was totally different. Here's a Northern kid going in the dead South. I mean, down the bayou. I didn't oh, yeah. know anything about the school. I didn't <laughs> eat any seafood or crawfish or anything like that. I was a meat and potato person. And, uh, once I got down there and, and I learned their customs, I just, I fell in love with it. I really didn't want to leave. I was there for three years, but um, it was a great opportunity. And then, you know, obviously when you win, um, it, it's more enjoyable. Oh yeah. That, I mean that it, it seems like a lot of times with winning any kind of drama problems, whatever, they just seem to vanish and go away. Everybody's like, ah, we're winning. Yeah. It feels great. Um, yeah. Okay. So, you know, and also, too, winning the Gulf, uh, Gulf Star Conference Championship as well. So, and advancing to the NIT, I mean, that had to be pretty special, too. It was. And um, at the time, it was Louisiana Lafayette, ULL, um, Yvette Gerard, who then went on to LSU. We had a great rivalry. So, I mean, at that time in 84, 85, 86, there would be a couple thousand people at Rage and Cajun Field. And um, obviously when I was at Florida State, I thought Florida fans were the worst. But man, when you <laughs> played against those raging Cajuns, they're out there drinking, having a good time. And their, their fence and their bleachers were right on top of you in the outfield. So our players had a hard time and stuff. But we had a great rivalry. So um, that was fun. That was real fun. I bet it sounds like it. And so you, you stay in the South, but you do make a move. You go to Florida State. Now you're only there for one year. But then you get an opportunity, still a successful year, of course, you know, still winning tons of games. And then you get the opportunity, you move on to Ohio State. Now, what was that like? Because the Buckeyes were struggling a little bit when you got there. Yeah. And being from Michigan, that was a tough move. However, <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I left Florida State the first time is my sister was having kids and they were uh, four and one. And my mm -hmm. mom kept saying, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. You need to come home. So 
I'm like, okay. So I took a job. I said, I'll come home, but you're not going to like where I'm going, being a <laughs> bred in Michigan family. So I go to Ohio State. A friend of mine uh, was the head coach. And uh, she had been after me. Come on, come on. And uh, so I took the opportunity. And, uh, yeah, they were struggling. And I think, again, uh, being close in age and they learned to trust me, we had some really good players on that team. In fact, when I was there, I believe we had the first All-American in Shauna Miller, um, whose daughter will graduate from Kent State this summer or this year and I watched her play last year that's how bad it is <laughs> <laughs> but no we we did we were very successful we won the first time Ohio State won the Big Ten championship so it was fun mm -hmm. it was fun yeah so how was that then with that turnaround because you know th that first year there not a whole lot of wins but then 1990 so you know you probably had a team that was not really expected to do much in 1990 but then they go on and win the Big Ten and get to go to the NCAA tournament. So how was that journey going through that year? Well, I think the biggest thing is was, was just instilling the work ethics and, um, you know, the drills that we did and getting them to believe in the system that we were doing. And, um, I mean, I honestly say at every program I've been at, all five, um, I've never had bad student athletes. I've had good people. And I was taught early on, and I think this was just from my playing experience in college, um, my coach at uh, Western Michigan, she always got good people. And I learned that early, that if you get good people, the rest will fall into place. Mm -hmm. And so I would do my homework, and I would watch the parents at the ball games, and I would recruit the parents as well. And so that way I knew the parents could trust me, but I knew um, – I wasn't getting a bad apple. I knew I was yeah. getting a good player and a good person, more importantly. Well, then, of course, now you make the move to Marshall. And, well, what, first of all, what was it like sitting around on campus for a year, not being <laughs> able to play yet, because you're, you're trying to make sure that you can have a team first? Well, yeah. So that, um, that spring, once I decided to leave Ohio State and go to West Virginia, I went out to Colorado and I literally sat back in the day. They, you know, had 50 million games going on at one time. <laughs> and uh, I literally sat and looked at going to be seniors and recruited them from not going to where they wanted to go and mm -hmm. said, you know what? I'm sitting here right now. I got a, I got a big old pocket of cash and I can give you this much. <laughs> and, um, and several people were like, Huntington where? And um, so, I mean, I had to learn a lot awful quick. And I did my research and then I just sat at the ballpark and I just said, you know, this is what I can give you. I know what the other schools are giving you and it's not, it's not close. So I was able to recruit people that way. Um, when the first year team, when I had them on campus, it was interesting with recruits because usually coaches say, okay, this class or this group of people is going to take the recruit around campus. Well, I didn't mm -hmm. have anybody. So yeah. I made the whole team go and we walked around. We, we, we learned everything. We went to the fountain. We, we went, read about the plane crash. We went down to the favorite restaurants. We did the walk. We did everything um, together. And I'm like, if I'm going to ask them to be responsible and understand what this um, school is about, I need to be a part of that. So we did everything together. And from the get go, I relied on um, the local players. Uh, Jeannie um, mm -hmm. was there. She was a transfer from Moorhead state. Um, she wanted to come back and her mom told her that Marshall was going to open softball. So I got a couple transfers. Mm -hmm. um, I had um, G uh, Laura, McLaughlin. Um, McLaughlin. So I had the local kids to say, Hey, there is a mall. Hey, yeah. this is where we go. <laughs> um, and I'm like, okay, great. So um, they educated me as well as their teammates. So it, it was interesting because um, from that point on, when I went to another school, I pretty much did the same thing with the recruit and the players. I got to learn face on from the people that lived there, that worked there. And I thought that was important. So that was really a big deal then to be able to have those local kids 
to really kind of help bring people in because then especially too, you end up getting from not far away in Ohio, you know, players like Missy Frost and Kerry Hinkle. So again, you know, still semi-local being able to bring them here and, you know, then get those West coast kids and, you know, from other places, like you said, where they're going Huntington, where, you know, be able to come here and, and really learn about the program. And I knew of Missy Frost when I was at Ohio state, I think she came to one of our camps and I knew of her because um, her dad was the high school coach at the time. So I even went when I was at Ohio State to watch her. So, yes, it was very important to get the regional kids in and all of different ages. So I wouldn't have, you know, 12 seniors or six yeah. seniors and six juniors. So with Jeannie transferring in, coming in as a junior, that was key because – she brought leadership. She already brought two years of college experience. So she just took over right away. And then again, when you get a bunch of women that are confident and good people, they all have the same passion. They all had the same goal. So it, it was really easy for me to um, teach them the skills and teach them what I thought they needed. But as far as being a group and, and a team, they did that all themselves. Okay, so now you say, obviously, a big important thing to you was making sure to bring in good people. But now, what, what were some of the other main points that you were trying to sell to players, especially, I mean, along with, obviously, scholarship offers? Yeah. What, were, what were some of the main things you were trying to sell them on in coming to a brand new program? Opportunity. Um, I thought, you know, you're going to lay the groundwork for the people to follow you. You're going to be the leaders. Or you can go to another program and you're going to have to sit or maybe earn your way. I'm going to tell you right now, I watched you and I know you can start because I know what I'm looking at. And so I, I tried to put the pieces together where I didn't have overload in here, but I had athletes like Missy could pitch, play outfield. Um, if she wanted to, I probably could put her in the infield. Jeannie was more of um, just an outfielder, but she had a strong bat. Um, Lauren, I went specifically for positions. But Carrie Hinkle, um, she could play anywhere. She was just a phenomenal athlete. She started out in center field because she was so vocal and she was quick. She read the ball off the bat. But then mm. I needed a shortstop, and, and she was like, I'll do whatever you need me to do. That's what I wanted. And so when I brought those kinds of people in, they were so multi-talented that they could go on the left side or the right side, or they could go out or they could come in. So we, we had some really good athletes. Well, and that's got to be such a, almost kind of like a dream for you, too, to be able to have such a talented athlete say, put me wherever you need me. And yeah, because nowadays I don't know if that would happen. <laughs> but <laughs> maybe, maybe not. But no, yeah. I mean, you know, they didn't care. They wanted to play. They mm -hmm. knew they were coming mm -hmm. for an opportunity. They were getting their schooling paid or whatever it was. And they – they just wanted to be on the field. They didn't have to sit and wait, but they also knew they had to earn it. It wasn't like, okay, you're, you're my only shortstop. No, I had two or three kids that could play there. I had six outfielders. I had three mm -hmm. kids that could pitch and play first or third. Uh, probably the catchers were maybe the only ones that um, were just catchers, but they brought in a big bat, so DP. Mm -hmm. Well, and how important was it too, that, you know, talking about getting transfers, that you got Heather Michaelis to come from Ohio State <laughs> there in 1992 and then able to bring her and get yeah, her. Yeah, I recruited her. So, yeah, that was like, yeah. yo, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I knew the family because I recruited kids off a certain program because I knew what I was getting from that program. Um, they taught fundamentals. They were very good athletes, good people again. So I recruited off their travel ball program quite a bit. So I got her sister, ha Hallie, who um, went on to be a trainer at uh, Wyoming, and now she's coaching out west somewhere. Um, and I got her little sister. However, the little sister had only stayed for a couple years because she really wanted to go into marine biology, and we didn't have it. And I yeah. – yeah. I didn't want her to come, but dad was like, no, they're all going together. I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. But, you know, we didn't have her major. So she mm -hmm. left after two years. But um, once Heather came, yeah, that that was key because um, she was a gamer. She was a gamer. She was really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely looking over those numbers that she had, that really all three of them had during yes. the time here. You know, you see just the three sisters and their numbers, and you just like, wow, that was impressive to be able to have all of them there. But – 
you know, so I mean, they okay, they were from California. Now, wh- was it a tough sell for you to get kids from the West Coast? I know you talked about obviously here's your opportunity for potentially more scholarship than you might get from these other schools. Here's your chance to start, but you know, that's kind of a long journey back across the country. Yes, but the players that I was looking at, they were looking at schools in the South or the North. So I wasn't, you know, it's like, Hey, we're kind of in the middle. So when we go on spring break, you know, we're going to leave and we're going to play against the same competition. You are in fact, when I believe when Christy Waring came, um, one of my sales job was I know what you're up against against Florida State. You're, you're not going to play right away. But that's your call. You do what you want. I know when you come here, you're going to be impact player. So we actually she went was. down, played Florida State, <laughs> and she had a, she had a game. And uh, yeah. I think at the time, she might have been Florida State's number three recruit. So obviously when you're not number one and coaches aren't after you and making those weekly phone calls, I was on them. I mean, I'd make phone calls all the time and say, look, man, I want you. I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting your time. Just let me know if you're interested, and we'll go from there. So it was kind of like showing them the love. Hey, this is what we have for you. Um, It's a great opportunity. You're going to set so many records. You're going to be the leaders of the program. Knowing the conference, I thought we had a great opportunity to win early and lay the foundation. And then, you know, people I thought would just say, okay, yeah, I'm coming to Marshall, <laughs> which, you know, they, they heard about us. Cause you know, even though we had a losing record at first, we still went out and played everybody. Cause I wanted to showcase the students, not only for our conference, but I thought we had some good shots at making some players on the all regional team. So we had to play teams outside our conference, but in the region. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of that's why we had a tough schedule. Not only going to Florida State, but South Carolina, um, North Carolina. It, I don't, you know, it didn't matter to me who we played because I, mm-hmm. I felt the team they were up for it. You know, those were the school names that they knew. They didn't mm-hmm. know really Georgia Southern, UTC, but they knew South Carolina, North Carolina. So it, it was a challenge. Mm-hmm. Well, and of course, even in games where maybe you would see the score and somebody would just go, "Wow, that was awful," but you can still see things that obviously would make you go, that's a good bright spot. There's a bright spot. Look at how they performed at this point, you know, and all that. So again, getting to test them against those big schools. Exactly. And and we pointed that out after uh, the games, you know, like, Hey, in our conference, you're not going to see this kid throw gas at you. So Mm -hmm. obviously we need to get more hits. We need to execute when we're on base. We need to do a better job, you know, running the bases or, picking up the bun and getting it down or whatever it was. But yeah, I mean, but in all reality, if it was their goal, which it was to win conference and move forward, we were going to have to play those teams in the region. So it was like, get used to it because it's not going to get any easier. (laughs) Yeah. Well, now just talk a little bit about that first season in 1994. I mean, a 17 and 21 record, but still, you know, it's again, it's a brand new program. It's, you know, everybody being brought together and getting the chance to play on that field for the first time. And you still get the Southern Conference Freshman of the Year. And you yeah. still have three players on the all-conference squad as well. Yeah, that was an interesting year. Not from a standpoint of coaching and stuff, but just a lot of first um, mm-hmm. watching the field be built, um, putting the poles on the inside of the field and not the outside. So Uh I'd have to be out there and and explain to them, no, it's safety issues. This is what we need. (laughs) Um, When they were putting up the backstop, uh, the dugouts, we painted the dugouts and all that fun stuff. But then they had the on deck batters area on the outside of the dugout on the concrete at the basketball area. And I'm asking what Uh that circle was. And they're like, oh, well, this – and I'm like, no, they're not running down to right field to get it. So it was <laughs> things that I never imagined, but it was interesting. Um, you That's know, a good one, step outside the field before you can come here. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I'm like, your eyes don't leave the field, your focus, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but um, it, it, it was interesting. We learned a lot together as a team. But um, I enjoyed it because I learned that – 
even though you know what you're thinking doesn't mean the other people that you're working with know. So you have to make sure your communication is there mm -hmm. as I learned with the construction crew and other things. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I just told them to go out there and do what they did best. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to make mistakes. We're new. You don't know your person standing next to you left or right. So we will make mistakes. But the thing is, we can't make the same mistake over and over. We have to learn from that mistake. And that's pretty much what we harped on probably the first three years. Mm. Well, then, of course, 1995, you get to the end of the season and you win the Southern Conference Tournament Championship. I mean, that had to feel pretty good. You're in your second season in existence, your second year as a, you know, as a, as a head coach. And there you win a championship. Yeah, and I believe we had the freshman of the year again. Um, yes. and we had several players on the all tournament team again. So I think, um, we were bringing in the right people. And obviously when you bring in good people that know what they're doing, uh, they get the job done, but it, that was fun. I, I, we won it down in uh, Georgia Southern and, uh, another fun trip. We always had fun on our trips. Most of the kids after we won went home with their parents. So okay. We didn't have a lot of people. So we had two vans back in the day, took the vans. We had two vans. So we went from real crowded to, you know, lots of room. We're driving before we even get out of town. Van breaks down. I'm like, oh, pile no. in, we're going home. We left it there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, we're going home. We, we won that. We deserve it. So, yeah. So that was fun because, uh, you know, I think um, that year, uh, maybe UTC was the only team that beat us overall in our regular season play. I don't think we beat them. And um, then we play end up playing Georgia Southern and stuff. So yeah, that was fun. And, and I knew we could do it. I knew we had the talent, but the players had to believe in themselves mm. to get it done. Well, I mean, you definitely brought in a couple of good players that year. Cause that was Christy Waring and Stephanie Cook, their freshman year. So, I mean, that, that's a, that's yeah. pretty hard for them. Yeah. I'm right yeah. in the championship. But unfortunately, you know, that's before you got that automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. So yeah. Even though you I know. When I got back, everybody was like, oh, you're going to go. You're going to go. And I'm like, time out. We have a losing <laughs> record and you have to have a winning record. And we didn't have automatic bids at the time. But yeah. we're not going to take anything away from the team because they did something unbelievable in two years. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Hey, it's, it's still winning a championship. Right. Yeah. And I wasn't disappointed because I knew the rules, but, um, you know, we, we just celebrated and, and congratulated them and said, this is what we're here for. Now, next year, we do it again, but we have a winning record, you know. Well, and then you end up with a couple of 30-win seasons. So, again, this team is starting to build and build. You're getting these players in, you know, players like, you know, Christy Waring, Carrie Hinkle, Stephanie Cook, they're all, you know, putting up those numbers and starting to lay down that foundation that you were talking about. Right. Right. And then I had a, another tra transfer from um, Virginia, not sure Virginia come somewhere in Virginia, Natasha um, yes. yeah. Johnson. And she mm -hmm. was good because she was a pitcher third baseman. So mm -hmm. while Missy Frost was there and Christy was there, I had three strong pitchers who could hit and who could play other positions. So I had three pitchers in the game and I'd be like, how much time do you need? Because if she gets, you're going in, you know, but yeah, that was a rarity back then. But, but again, strong athletes, strong mm -hmm. athletes. Well, and then you also recruit and bring in a pitcher like Sarah Gullah. She ends up setting all of the, pretty much just about all the pitching records during her time here. She's now in the Marshall athletics hall of fame. So is Christy Waring. So you know, again, how was that being able to try and bring somebody from out west again to come back here and play and, you know, probably probably telling her that, hey, you can get the ball. You can start right now. And I'm not going to lie. I was at the right spot at the right time for all those kids. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I might have been watching a nine o'clock game at night when it was freezing cold out in California. Um, I just happened to be at the right spot. Uh, Sarah being a strong lefty, again, could hit, could play first base. Those were the things that I offered her. It wasn't like, hey, you're just going to be a pitcher. No, mm -hmm. here's the pass. Missy played outfield or she was on the mouth. Ta Tasha played third or pitch. Christy first or pitch. So you're going to go into the same thing. I, I never tried to recruit a one-dimensional person or player. 
just because I felt if somebody went down, you know, they, we need to make adjustments. So Sarah, to be honest with you, Sarah was kind of easy. She just wanted to do something different. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, she ne- had no clue where West Virginia was. <laughs> and that was my first, that was my first, like, oh, you got to come. You'll love it. You know, we go to bridge day. This is what we do. Da, 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 da. And she was just like, okay. <laughs> so she was, she was an easy sell. <laughs> well, I, I got to ask you this, then, especially getting to travel across the country, because in a lot of the times that I've traveled with the team, you go out to some of these states out West and they say, well, where's Marshall? And you say Huntington, West Virginia. And, oh, is that near the beach? Yeah. Tell them, well, it's about an eight-hour drive. And they, well, I don't think Virginia was that big. And, well, Virginia is not that big. <laughs> like, it is a separate state. I mean, you know. I mean, it, 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 it's funny because back then, they, don't know. they don't. Geography yeah. was terrible back then. It <laughs> might still be today. But I know um, we shared so many fun stories the first time we went out to California. Because that was another thing. I said, you're going to come. Over here, we're going to go back to where you play and play in front of your home home crowd. I thought that was fair. So we get on the plane and we're flying out and and um, some of the local kids had never been on a plane before. Oh, yeah. And so they're like, you know, looking out the window. Hey, this is cool. Are we, how much longer? And they were just <laughs> – it was so funny. And the West Coast kids were like, oh, my gosh, it's a you know, six-hour flight. And I'd always try to get direct. And – but to hear the first time and they were, you know, some were nervous some were holding on and, um, but it was fun because they got to see where the kids from the other side of the country lived and what it was like. And so mm-hmm. now when they came back to Marshall, the locals then would take them in and say, okay, you're coming to our house. Cause this is what we do. So yeah. it, it was, it was really fun. We, we did a lot outside the softball field because at that time we could, mm-hmm. um, we, we weren't as restricted. So I made sure every weekend we were trying to do something outside of softball, whether okay. it was, you know, go look at the leaves, go to bridge day. We, we went to bridge day a couple of times, uh, rented a cabin for them. They stayed okay. in the cabin. Um, then we walked around one, one time, uh, in the fall, we went uh, whitewater rafting. Um, no. that was fun. They got to jump off rocks, you know. So, I mean, that's what we created was the memories, and that was the fun part. Oh, yeah. Well, and, of course, obviously the team building and all that that comes with that. I mean, you get to know more about each other more than just when you're together on the field. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so now, you know, you move on from Marshall, you go to Florida State, and just this unbelievably you know successful run so many NCAA tournaments I mean what what was that like to go back and coach with um, Dr. Joanne Graff well it was fun because Joanne knew me and her assistant was um, moving on so she had contacted me and said hey I'm not sure if you're interested but if you want so I'm like okay so I thought about it I'm like okay maybe it's time to move on Mm. Um, so I did And, uh, yeah, it was fun. Um, the, probably the only difference was more money in the budget allowed Mm -hmm. us to do more things. Um, more money in the budget gave the players probably three uniforms instead of two. Um, you know, we had more players. Um, but other than that, I mean, the talent wise, uh, like I said, Christy and others were recruited to big schools. So um, the first time I was at Florida State, I actually ended up going to baseball games or slow pitch games because the state of Florida didn't have fast pitch. So the second time around was a little easier to recruit because I could go to – I recruited heavy in Georgia um, because it was so close. And it gave the uh, student athletes an opportunity to go four hours away instead of maybe eight um, and the SCC was, you know, just starting, I believe. So okay. Georgia was a hotbed between Florida and Georgia. And then we went to the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Um, the postseason, it, it, you know, it's challenging, but uh, to play against the best, that's what you're there for. So mm-hmm. it was a great opportunity. Now you went with another head coaching stop. You go to Monmouth. How was, you, how was your time in New Jersey? Cold. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to lie. 
<laughs> it was cool. You went, back, you went back north again. <laughs> I know. Well, a friend of mine was up there. She used to coach at Maryland. And she okay. called me and she said, hey, Mammoth is right on the beach. You're going to mm -hmm. love it. Um, you know, it's a great area. She didn't live far from there. And she goes, you need to check out this job. I'm like, okay. So I did. I went up there and I really liked it. It's um, Woodrow Wilson's former property and the administration building was his summer house. So oh, it actually okay. started small. I think when I was up there, maybe 2000 people. So it wasn't really large, uh, several buildings, many buildings. Um, but it was a large piece of property that they had built on. And, um, they at that time were reconstructing their softball field. So I got to kind of help in that project. So that was fun. Um, Northeast, I didn't really know anything about it except for it was cold. Um, <laughs> And, you know, the coach before me was there for a, several years, and I can't remember how they ended up prior to me coming there. So, um, you know, I just took the team. We had a great group of freshmen coming in. I think at that time we only had two seniors, so okay. we were young. And, um, yeah, so uh, that first year was good. It was just cold. Uh, you know, the problem is when you're in an outdoor sport, you need an indoor facility to practice. In. Yeah. And we just used uh, like Henderson gym to, you know, yeah. work on ground balls and hit and do that. And it was like, yeah, no, the nice been, thing been, was been in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so the nice thing was um, you could go out the back door and the turf football field was right there. So mm -hmm. I'm like, put all your clothes on. I don't care how many layers we're out there for 15 minutes just to, get fly balls, throw long, get some ground balls, then we'll come back in and hit. Um, so it, it, it's gorgeous area though. I mean, I live two miles from the beach, so I will not, I will not uh, say anything bad about it because it was a nice, it was a great experience. It really was. Okay. Well then you have another change of address. Now you're coming down to Atlanta and you spent a little time with Emory University. So how was that then, now going down into a- uh, So I retired, school? yeah. So I retired because um, I had my second hip operation. I had my first one when I was down in Florida on my left, and then I had my other one done in 15. So mm -hmm. one of my former Florida State players was the head coach at Emory. She's like, come on, help me, come and help me. And for two years, I said, no. And she'd call all the time, come on, please, please help me. And I'm like, Penny, no. <laughs> so year three, I'm like, okay, fine. But these are the circumstances, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's one of the reasons I retired is because I have both hips replaced. I had mm -hmm. back surgery in 2000. I had okay. rotator cuff on my left and I had labrum on my right. So my body had taken a beating between all the sports yeah. and years of coaching. So I'm like, you know, I just want to chill out and not do anything. <laughs> Maybe I'll just come, you know, once a week or something. No. Well, then she talks me into it. So I go and I'm like, okay, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun though. It was fun because D3 you only have 15 days to practice in the fall, which I loved. So it yeah. didn't wear and tear on my body and oh, they're yeah. only allowed to play 42 games. Okay. So that yeah, was perfect. I mean, they're going to be doctors, season, yeah. lawyers and whatever. And that's great. So the 15 mm -hmm. days in the fall, that's all my body really could handle. And mm -hmm. the nice thing too, with division three, if a player wants to come in and get extra pitching or hitting, you, you're like, sorry, can't. You got to go do it on your own. So, <laughs> so it was easier on my body than, you know, eight weeks of, you know, or six weeks of eight hours. And then you go into 20 hours and then you take, mm. you know, two weeks off and you come back in January and you stop in May. So yeah. my body, my body physically needed a break. It, I, it, it's <laughs> right. It, it really is. Um, so now with your track record from a lot of the things that I saw, you were dealing a lot with the hitters. So what were some of your main points that you tried to drive to your hitters? What were some of the main things that you really tried to focus on with them to be able to have success on the field? Well, I think they needed to have a plan 
they needed to know the situation because every time you step in the box, it's a different situation. So they needed to know their plan on the on-deck circle. You know, if the person ahead of you did this and they were on this base, what was going to be your plan? What pitch were you going to look for for that situation? Obviously, you're not going to hit a rise if I need you to bunt. So we, we talk strategy in that regards because I think when you're dealing with youth players, they just want to come in and hit. And they don't yeah. realize that, you know, if I got a runner on second and third, you need to put the ball in the outfield or hit behind the runner. Mm -hmm. Um you know, um, if you got weak, if you got a weak third baseman and she can't feel the ball in the run, then I'm okay with the dribbler. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to power hit it if you're a lefty. Let's just, you know, put it down. So I, I think more of the strategic part, um, the skill work, most of the kids coming in, they were from good programs and they had the good skill. And obviously, day, daily routine, we strengthen that. However, mm -hmm. they needed to know the strategy. You know, it was like, this is what I need you to do. You're up. You got a bat. You need to put the yeah. ball in play. And you need to look for certain pitches that allows you to be successful. Okay. So now, in all of your time since becoming a student athlete, you've been a part of around 1,300 wins. Oh, geez. Oh. Nice. <laughs> uh, what, that makes what, me old. <laughs> what, what, what were some of the most memorable, very successful too, but what were some of the most memorable ones? Oh, geez. Um, I think one that stands out when I played at the World Series, um, we were, I think we finished fourth one year. That was a good run. Um, one of the times that I was at uh, Florida State, we played UCLA. They were seated first. We were seated mm. eighth. So we played okay. them. I had a left fielder. We, we worked on angles and dives and all that. She would never dive. And uh, she goes, Coach, when the time is right, I will do it. So we're playing <laughs> UCLA. And I think two people were on, and we were only up by one run, two outs. And this hitter from UCLA hits one into the shallow left field but towards the line. Okay. And she comes in running, and she just lays out and grabs it. And I think I was the first person standing in front of her before the shortstop or third baseman because we had won that game. <laughs> and we had just upset UCLA, you know, and it was their first game. It was our first game. And I sprinted out of that field so fast. And I'm like, you did it. And it wasn't even about the win. It was mm -hmm. about the fact that here's this player saying, when, when I need to do it, I'm going to do it. And she just laid out and she looked at me and I said, she goes, I told you I'd do it. I just started laughing. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And obviously when in the, um, the SoCal um, or the uh, SoCon uh, tournament the second year, mm -hmm. because I didn't expect it so soon. I thought, you know, it'd take us at least three years, maybe four, just to build yeah. the foundation. Yeah. But um, like I said, bringing in different peoples of, of different uh, classes, I think that helped, especially with Jeannie Noble and her leadership. That was key because she had already played. Um, and then getting Heather, that helped. Mm -hmm. And then obviously the strong pitching. Yeah. So now, okay, you've seen and been around the game for a long time. What are some of the biggest changes that you have seen over the time? Um, equipment. Obviously the bats are livelier. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say uh, more short game specialists. Back in the day, there were lefties, but they didn't run through the box like they did. Um, mm -hmm. So there's more short game specialties. Um, I think obviously the um, of the restrictions, which are good and bad, um, you know, because the student has to be a student, yeah. um, you know, all that type of stuff. But as far as the game itself, I'd, I'd probably say the equipment has made the – you know, when you got slappers hitting the ball out, I would mm -hmm. say that's nothing to take away from the slappers, but definitely equipment and the pitching, you know. Um, nowadays, people have maybe four pitchers on their team, mm -hmm. and uh, some are just maybe pitchers. And so they get in a bind, they take them out. And I think back in the day, well, you know, man, if Christy had to throw three games straight, she'd throw three straight games. I wasn't <laughs> with the ball or Missy. Yeah. You know, I'd be like, are you tired? No, I'm good. Okay, go. 
So yeah, they, they yeah, definitely put up some there. innings. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, um, finally then, what are some of the things that you've been a part of that, that make you most proud, that you have been a part of, you know, as far as some of your, some of your best moments that you remember from being a coach? I think, number one, I've only had two kids that didn't graduate. Um, one from Marshall, um, but she took over her dad's company. Okay. Um, she couldn't okay. pass the math. And so, unfortunately, she, when she left, um, she runs her dad's AC and heating company. Um, okay. But other than that, just two players out of 30-plus years that didn't graduate. That's probably my biggest accomplishment. I think not that I had anything to do with them graduating. However, <laughs> yeah, you get I, again. You focus, though. I, I mean, you got to tell them, hey, if you don't pass your classes, you can't play. Well, and, and again, a funny story because we had a lot of funny ones when you're driving in a van because, you oh, yeah. know, you're right there. And Steph Cook was um, working on her Spanish class. And she was talking and, and looking at the book and she goes, well, this isn't right. This book is wrong. This is not how we talk out in California. <laughs> and I said, well, maybe that street's Spanish and you're trying to learn, you know, correct Spanish. But well, this yeah. isn't correct. We don't say that. So I think the oh, wow. memories from, you know, the traveling, uh, every time when we went down to Florida, we went to, I took them to Disneyland. Um, Heather Michaelis wanted to go to Ron John's, which is on the other side. So we had to go from Orlando just to go to Ron John's in Fort Lauderdale. Cause here's a West coast kid. I just want to get some cool board shorts. Okay. Oh, let's yeah. go. Uh, the race carts races that we did. Um, oh. I used to make them dress up for Halloween and we'd be in Henderson and we do the, um, Oh, the dizzy Lizzie's with the bat, put your bat head on forehead yeah. on the bat. And, um, oh, the janitors would participate. We had other student athletes. Um, we just did those fun things because we could. Nowadays, yeah. there, there are just so many confinements and they're so busy with everything that um, it's like you can only do some things in postseason. Whereas all the places I've been at, I've always made it possible for the kids to have fun throughout the year. Um, Halloween, yeah. I love. So at every school, I, we always had practice in Halloween costumes. Otherwise, if you didn't come in a costume, you did not practice. Uh -oh. And so, um, yeah, so we did a lot of fun things, you know, and I think that's the, they made so many memories. The mm -hmm. players made so many memories because of that. It wasn't just ball, but obviously when you have a relaxed student athlete and they know what they're doing, they do well in academics and they do well on the field. So I yeah. just think it was a mixture of, of things. All right. Well, Coach Byrne, thank you very much for joining me here with this. Like I said, sure. well, thank you for having me. Well, yeah, I, when, I, when I thought about doing this, you, you were the first name that came up because like I said, you were the only coach I haven't experienced. <laughs> so I thought, well, I, I have to talk to the person who started this program. I mean, she's the one that brought it up from scratch, you know, trying That's to. Funny. Well, I think I left Sean in it with some good players. You know, oh, I, 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 I teased so, her yeah. about that. I was like, dude, man, you got to win. And you got, I, I left you everything, you know? Yeah. I I'll see her in the summers and stuff and, and we'll laugh. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, when she came down to Atlanta one summer to recruit, she was going to Indiana and the one before who's there now, Heather, uh, Megan, Megan, Megan Brown. Okay. So before Megan, the, yeah. the girl that was there. Okay. Yeah. So the, the all three of us there. Yeah. yeah. So all three of us were there and I'm like, here's history. Someone should take a picture. Three <laughs> martial coaches. <laughs> so I see him, you know, and joke around. And in, in fact, um, I called uh, Megan to congratulate her because she was a student athlete at um, North Carolina when I coached mm -hmm. against her. So yeah. she's like, I didn't know you started the program. I'm like, yeah, so you better take good care of that. <laughs> well, she, well, she actually told me one day I'd, I'd gone over there for something and she said that I guess she was looking back through maybe the North Carolina records or something. And she said that their team record for most RBI in a game was against Marshall and she played in that game. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Thanks yeah, for looking exactly. that up. Yeah. Hey, but I do have, um, I was going through some old pictures 
Mm-hmm. Of, uh, and I don't know if you want them from the players when they won the conference and action shots. Would you have any use for that? Oh, absolutely. I, okay. I have tried to dig through as much as I can, especially with, with writing up the record book the way that I have. Um, and, and, you know, when I do all of these birthday posts and everything, I always wish that I had more than just, well, here's a screenshot from their, uh, media right. page. Right. You know, I, that would be absolutely wonderful. Should uh, I just go on your website and mail them to you at the university? I, I, you, you can either mail them. I mean, if, if, but if you still wanted to keep them, obviously, if you have a way. Well, to- I have so many and you know, okay. my mom was here, so I got duplicates and stuff. And, <laughs> and so like, I'm like, okay, why do I have five of the same pictures? And we didn't have a photographer. Yeah. So between the parents or I would say, Hey, here's my camera. Could you take some pictures? Yeah. Because everything was so new. So we didn't have, mm-hmm. you know, SID and all this stuff. So, yeah. I mean, you're more than welcome to have what I don't need. I, oh, I, I want to make sure they get in the right hands. Because like you said, um, good or bad, it is history. Mm-hmm. It was the first couple of years. And I just want to make sure they're in the right hands because, you know, my mom doesn't need them. So, um, <laughs> but like I, like I mentioned, I do have several copies of them, uh, of the players. And, and it's funny to see them now because I follow so many on Facebook and, you know, they have kids and this, and I'm like, ah, your daughter's just like you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I torment them. I yeah, torment them. Absolutely. I would love to have them because after they come to me, um, you know, when I'm done, you know, I'll probably end up scanning them myself. So that way I can upload okay. them and I'll give them over to Lori Thompson in Morrow library. Okay. Uh, she, she's been working in archives and she, she loves softball. I absolutely well, love the team. And awesome. And, and I'm hoping that some other players, I wanted to come up last year um, when Nicole and Rachel got in the hall of fame, yeah. but I had another commitment because I didn't get this one on time. And I had another kid going in the hall of fame. It's been back to back where I had Florida state and Marshall, but mm-hmm. I knew Mar- I knew Florida state like, the year before or whenever, and then Marshall was after, so I couldn't make it. So, but yeah, I think, I think the university has to have these um, or should have these. So that way, you know, if another player gets in under my coaching era, you know, you got some action shots and that's, they like to see pictures of themselves. (laughs) Absolutely. I I love that stuff. I mean, I, I, I love history. I love the history of the game. I obviously love the history of this team. I've tried to look up, you know, anything I can get my hands on. And then obviously, of course, wanting to talk to the coach who started, started the whole thing. So yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks for everything you're doing because um, doing the birthday things, that's, that's huge because the players like that. They, they like a shout out. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, back, back in 2014, I, I thought about it because we were coming up to um, October 7th and it was Christina Braxton's birthday who was on the team at the time. So I, I just kind of, the idea popped into my head and I, and I asked, I asked Shonda, I said, what would you think if I started doing this? You know, if I was able to kind of find all the birthdays of everybody, if I could start doing birthday, you know, announcements for all of them, you know, for all the alum, I, she loved it. She absolutely. Wow. So that's awesome. She, she was like, definitely go for it. You you're in charge of that. You go. There to- you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's uh, nice because it, it is part of, the program and it brings the different teams together that yeah. you know people they don't know each other and it's just a, it's another fun thing for the players yeah. you know and obviously too young. most yeah i well and obviously too most of the people that are going to be really looking at the page now are going to be knowing the players that are on the team now exactly I'd like to try and let them know about the ones that came before the ones that helped build this program up to sure now absolutely and that's important for every program you know, yeah. especially in the women's program because they didn't have it. Now, obviously, Marshall had it, and then they cut it, and then they brought it back. But a lot of programs, um, yeah, do a lot of history with the players before them. And, you know, mm-hmm. jersey numbers and where's this person from and that type of stuff. So, yeah, no, that's huge. That's huge. But thanks for everything you do. I'll uh, put something together, Absolutely. and I'll send it to you so you have it. And um, I have duplications of articles that I'll send okay. you to. Okay. Um, Absolutely. Don't ask me why I have three copies of everything, but I do. <laughs> so, um, Hey, memories, you know, you never know. What you might <laughs> no, have. I know, but I'm like, I'm like going through my Marshall stuff and I'm like, wow, why do I have like five of this picture? And I got three of the stapled art, um, 
articles all together. But hey, so <laughs> I figured, I, you know, one of these days I'm going to get around to, hey, sending you up some stuff. So Oh, absolutely. I would, I would love to have it. And I know after I get done, you know, filing the way, the way, the way that I have it, Lori's going to love to see it all too. So oh, good. It, it'll be great. We'll, we'll love it. Absolutely. Whatever, whatever you have that you want to send, I'll take okay. it. Okay. I'll just send it up to your office. Tell Megan I said hi. All right. Hopefully we'll they're working hard and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, they're going to play this spring. I, that's, that's, that's obviously the plan. So, you know. Yeah, we finished, um, we finished, well, we're not finished yet. High school ball in our area has been playing. Okay. And uh, one more week and then they start the playoffs. They're just going to a four um, team regional and then okay. whoever wins goes to the state. But they've been successful. Um, middle school ball ended last week and the high school will end in about a week or two. So okay. um, fingers are crossed that um, they get to play. They get to make a comeback and play. Yeah, well, I we have a good group now. They've they've been working hard and doing what they need to to, of course, stay out of uh, quarantine trouble. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. absolutely. All well, right. Well, thanks again, Scott. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Coach. Appreciate you. All right. Out. All right. Thank you.